Hey there, welcome back. This is the day the Lord has made, and these are the readings for day number 43 on the Digging Deeper Daily Reading Calendar. Exodus 25 and 26, Psalm 1, and the second reading in Luke 2. Yesterday we heard a call for the Israelites to be good neighbors and to practice justice, and we heard the requirement for all Israelites to celebrate three festivals. God gave promises of how he would bring them into the land. Then we heard the story of how Moses led the people in accepting the covenant. The Israelites promised to obey. Moses told them to wait for him, and then went up to the summit of the mountain. He ended up staying there forty days and forty nights. Exodus 25 The Lord told Moses, Tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred offerings. Accept the contributions from all whose hearts are moved to offer them. Here is a list of sacred offerings you may accept from them. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat hair for cloth, tanned ram skins and fine goat skin leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, onyx stones and other gemstones to be set in the ephod and the priest's chest piece. Have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. Have the people make an ark of acacia wood, a sacred chest 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it inside and outside with pure gold and run a molding of gold all around it. Cast four gold rings and attach them to its four feet two rings on each side. Make poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings at the side of the ark to carry it. These carrying poles must stay inside the rings, never remove them. When the ark is finished, place inside it the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant which I will give to you. Then make the ark's cover the place of atonement, from pure gold. It must be 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. Then make two cherubim from hammered gold and place them on the two ends of the atonement cover. Mold the cherubim on each end of the atonement cover, making it all of one piece of gold. The cherubim will face each other and look down on the atonement cover. With their wings spread above it, they will protect it. Place inside the ark the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant which I will give you. Then put the atonement cover on top of the ark. I will meet you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim that hover over the ark of the covenant. From there I will give you my commands for the people of Israel. Then make a table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it with pure gold and run a gold molding around the edge. Decorate it with a 3-inch border all around and run a gold molding along the border. Make four gold rings for the table and attach them at the four corners next to the four legs. Attach the rings near the border to hold the poles that are used to carry the table. Make these poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Make special containers of pure gold for the table, bowls, pans, pitchers, and jars to be used in pouring out liquid offerings. Place the bread of the presence on the table to remain before me at all times. Make a lampstand of pure hammered gold. Make the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece, the base, center stem, lamp cups, buds, and petals. 
Make it with six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches will have three lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. Craft the center stem of the lampstand with four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There will also be an almond bud beneath each pair of branches, where the six branches extend from the center stem. The almond buds and the branches must all be of one piece with the center stem, and they must be hammered from pure gold. Then make the seven lamps for the lampstand, and set them so they reflect their light forward. The lamp snuffers and trays must also be made of pure gold. You will need 75 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Exodus 26 Make the tabernacle from ten curtains of finely woven linen. Decorate the curtains with blue, purple, and scarlet thread and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. These ten curtains must all be exactly the same size, 42 feet long and 6 feet wide. Join five of these curtains together to make one long curtain. Then join the other five into a second long curtain. Put loops of blue yarn along the edge of the last curtain in each set. The 50 loops along the edge of one curtain are to match the 50 loops along the edge of the other. Then make 50 gold clasps and fasten the long curtains together with the clasps. In this way, the tabernacle will be made of one continuous piece. Make 11 curtains of goat hair cloth to serve as a tent covering for the tabernacle. These 11 curtains must all be exactly the same size, 45 feet long and 6 feet wide. Join five of these curtains together to make one long curtain and join the other six into a second long curtain. Allow three feet of material from the second set of curtains to hang over the front of the sacred tent. Make fifty loops for one edge of each large curtain. Then make fifty bronze clasps and fasten the loops of the long curtains with the clasps. In this way, the tent covering will be made of one continuous piece. The remaining three feet of this tent covering will be left to hang over the back of the tabernacle. Allow 18 inches of remaining material to hang down over each side so the tabernacle is completely covered. Complete the tent covering with a protective layer of tanned ram skins and a layer of fine goatskin leather. For a framework of the tabernacle, construct frames of acacia wood. Each frame must be 15 feet high and 27 inches wide, with two pegs under each frame. Make all the frames identical. Make 20 of these frames to support the curtains on the south side of the tabernacle. Also make 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame, with the pegs fitting securely into the bases. For the north side of the tabernacle, make another 20 frames with their 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame. Make six frames for the rear, the west side of the tabernacle, along with two additional frames to reinforce the rear corners of the tabernacle. These corner frames will be matched at the bottom and firmly attached at the top with a single ring, forming a single corner unit. Make both of these corner units the same way. So there will be eight frames at the rear of the tabernacle, set in sixteen silver bases, two bases under each frame. Make crossbars of acacia wood to link the frames, five crossbars for the north side of the tabernacle and five for the south side. Also make five crossbars for the rear of the tabernacle, which will face west. The middle crossbar, attached halfway up the frames, will run all the way from one end of the tabernacle to the other. 
Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to hold the crossbars. Overlay the crossbars with gold as well. Set up this tabernacle according to the pattern you were shown on the mountain. For the inside of the tabernacle, make a special curtain of finely woven linen. Decorate it with blue, purple, and scarlet thread and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. Hang this curtain on gold hooks attached to four posts of acacia wood. Overlay the posts with gold and set them in four silver bases. Hang the inner curtain from clasps and put the Ark of the Covenant in the room behind it. This curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Then put the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, on top of the Ark of the Covenant inside the most holy place. Place the table outside the inner curtain on the north side of the tabernacle and place the lamp stands across the room on the south side. Make another curtain for the entrance to the sacred tent. Make it of finely woven linen and embroider it with exquisite designs using blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Craft five posts from acacia wood, overlay them with gold, and hang the curtain from them with gold hooks. Cast five bronze bases for the posts. Job is perhaps the earliest book of the Old Testament, but we don't find a primitive book, do we? We find a book of sophisticated poetry, one that uses literary devices and makes reference to mythology, and we find a book that defies simple analysis. At the conclusion of Job, some of you may be feeling that some basic questions were not really answered. Some of you may be saying, but I have suffered injustice and God has not responded the way he did to Job at the end. To those of you, I would say that we can learn several things from Job, and one would be that there are many more things that God considers than what we know about. And secondly, we can be sure that God is just and fair, and that in the final analysis, when we reach heaven, things will be resolved. And another answer is that I hope you continue reading the Bible with us this year, because we will find more answers about God's sovereignty and justice as we read. The book of Psalms was the nation of Israel's hymn book. The poems were completed over time, with most of the first half by King David. The Psalms fall into these categories. Instruction, praise, thanksgiving, penitence, trust, distress, aspiration, history, and prophecy. Under prophecy, The Psalms talk of Jesus' prophetic office, his priestly office, and his kingly office, his sufferings, and his resurrection. Psalm 1 O the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Yesterday we heard of Jesus' birth, of the angel's announcement to the shepherds, and of Jesus being presented in the temple. 
which is where we pick up the story today. Luke 2, starting at verse 25. At that time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him into the temple, so when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you promised. For I have now seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal you to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, but he will be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel and from the tribe of Asher. And she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of eighty-four. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, They returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. There the child grew up, healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was twelve years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth. But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. His mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them, and his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Thank you for joining me today, and let's pray together. Glorious Heavenly Father, We thank you for your word, and we pray that we might be like those in Psalm 1 that delight in your law and meditate on your word day and night. It says here they are like trees planted along a river bank, bearing fruit each season. Father, we pray that we might be those who so love your word that you will bless us. 
And as it says, you watch over the paths of the godly. We pray that we might be that kind of people and living for the glory of Christ.